Hello everyone, and welcome to Nanolids at Dawn. I'm your host, Dominic, or Shadow Fury, whichever you prefer, and we have some replay casts, some requested replay casts. We're gonna start off with a match between Ultra Godzilla and Paul Bello on Otago. Ultra Godzilla going for the Cloakybot Factory, and Paul Bello going for tanks. I would personally prefer tanks in this map, but to be fair, Cloakybots do have glaives, and glaives are very fast, hence why glaives. Although I'm kind of curious what's gonna happen here, because I have seen... Some people complain about how the tank Koki matchup is a little bit wonky because, I mean, tanks, they have Kodachis, they have Blitzes, but Kodachis kind of got weirdly messed around with recently. This is actually, by the way, this is not the most recent version. This is 1.6.11.3, not 1.6.12. So there are, like, no changes that really affect this because most of those changes had to do with, one, with the way the outline widget worked and archers. So Kodachi's nerf that was before. Say so Kodachi's well, nerf buff, whatever. They got they got changed, is my point. They actually got changed in a way that makes them slightly better against Glaives, but yeah, they They got changed. But still, yeah, Blitzes, I would say would be probably what we're gonna see coming out of Paul Bello once they notice that Glaives are on the way. Because that's really kind of the way to go. I kind of it's somewhat expensive, but you're able to just stun out the Glaives to often from doing anything. Blitz Kodachi. They do number. They completely wreck glaives. Fortunately, it looks like Paul Bello will actually not be able to get any defenses up in time. Their commander is in position, but again, this is the last version, so the commander does not, does not have the beam laser yet. Does have the pea shooter and is going to be fine. There aren't like half a dozen glaives just bearing down on it, so it should be fine. And at the same time, there's a Kodachi. Setting that glaive on fire and making his day inconvenient, but not actually killing it. You would need a couple shots to do that. At the same time, though, Paul Bello... I'm kind of curious how they're actually going to be able to get in here. It looks like the Glaives should be able to stop or at least significantly slow the Kodachis coming in. At the same time, Ultra Godzilla unable to get any harassment of their own. But to me, Paul Bello has a lot more work to do because the Kodachi is more expensive. And just tanks have a harder time getting around. They don't have as many lightweight units they can use to defend anything being built up. And right now, Ultra Godzilla already getting their Glaives in position to deal with this. I don't know if they have radar. They don't have radar coverage of this Kodachi, but they know it's there. They have seen it, they have gotten rid of it, they have saved their base from getting harassed by Kodachi, which is probably for the best, considering they have no static defenses at all, and they're relying entirely on those Glaives being in the right spot at the right time to defend their base. Bit of a risky move, but not a bad idea overall. At this point, it looks like Paul Bello is in a slightly better position for expansion, or at least for keeping their base around. Because if these glaives are destroyed, Ultra Godzilla is going to have a bit of a tough time actually defending their base. They don't have a whole... They don't have anything static defenses-wise. These glaives are about it. If these glaives go down, that could be a major blow for Ultra Godzilla, but it looks like they are going to manage to get... more or less catch up with the Kodachi. Okay, Paul Bello, why did you go there? What? Okay, I mean, not a terrible idea. If you get rid of the glaives, that'd be very effective. But the question, of course, is how are you going to actually get rid of the glaives? Like, yeah, the Kodachi is going to be of some use. It will help get rid of a lot of the Glaives. But it's going to take a while to actually regenerate, and those Glaives have a lot of damage per second. Actually, it looks like it's fine. Okay, that... That I don't agree with. I don't understand what Paul Bello is doing there. They must expect their static defenses. I That must be what they're thinking. Is that Ultra Godzilla must have made static defenses in their base. But the thing is, they haven't. It's entirely undefended. It's this naked main base. I've never seen this before, or very rarely seen this before. Certainly not seen it work as well as it has, but Ultra Godzilla is doing a great job just making Paul Bello afraid to attack. And that's all that needs to be done. As long as Paul Bello is thinking that attacking is going to be suicide, it doesn't really matter. Ultra Godzilla can do whatever they want. They don't have to put any defenses in their base, which is kind of surprising. I would have expected something, but again, tanks being what they are, being heavyweight units that don't have a whole lot of ways of protecting map control until they get a lot of units, like, until they get a huge amount of run money available. That leaves Ultra Godzilla very flexible for actually expanding around the map. That being said, they are behind. Mostly due to the lack of energy production. That's... That's been a bit of a concern. But yeah, the lack of their energy, mostly because they're defi they're depending entirely on wind on a map where wind is not necessarily going to work at all. I mean, is this even an option like, anywhere in this map? I think in the hills it... Yeah, in the hills it's fine. But otherwise, no, that's not even an option. So Ultra Godzilla getting somewhat crippled by the fact that they don't have much in the way of power generation. But at the same time, Paul Bello, they've just expanded more on the map. 
Ultra Godzilla is in a position where they could expand quite quickly, but they haven't done so. So Ultra Godzilla and Paul Bello, I'd say they're on roughly even footing just because of the fact that Paul Bello needs that money in order to build an army that they can actually use to get around the map. If they don't do that, they're not getting anywhere on this map, and that's going to leave Ultra Godzilla free to actually expand ultimately. At this point, though, it's pretty even. I mean, the main problem right now is that Paul Bello has to make sure they don't lose these units because, again, it takes a little while for them to build units, and more importantly, they can't just send lightweight units around the map. Tank Factory has no lightweight units. Those don't exist. So actually making that work is not going to be really an option. All things considered, though, Paul Bello should be fine. And the Blitz up, able to get rid of the Glaive, able to get rid of the Ronin. So yeah, this is not an issue. Ronin should go down, and that'll be... Well, that'll be that, but of course it's not over yet. And the problem for Paul, for Paul Bello is that they are going primarily for Ogres, which they're okay. But they're not really the option to go for. The, the Ronin will have an easy time with them. The Reavers actually won't have a hard time with them. And they don't fire frequently enough to really get rid of Glaives unless they're very closely packed Glaives. And these aren't very closely packed Glaives. Some of these, okay, maybe in some spots, but not frequently. Still, okay, it does fine for now. I mean, once this army comes close, then we'll, we'll see what happens to the Ogre. But... That's my point more so is that Ultra Godzilla has been taking the advantage or taking advantage of this opportunity to expand quite a lot actually and that's putting them pretty well on par with Paul Bello as far as economy goes they have also managed to get a, a small advantage as far as their attrition goes not particularly large like not nothing that's going to win them the game necessarily but still a reasonably large advantage same time Paul Bello they are ahead they are more, at this point, ahead on Overdrive. Now, okay, Ultra Godzilla has definitely taken more of the map. Ultra Godzilla has the map. They don't have much in the way of metal, but that's just because they don't have much in the way of power. And again, that's that's also the one thing keeping them behind right now, is the fact that they're relying on wind generation when this map has 0, 0.0 on the ground. Like, 0, 0.0 to 2.5. So, on the ground, it's not really an option. In the air, sure. Or, on the hills, rather, sure. But, that's not what we're dealing with right now. So Ultra Godzilla, yeah, they're mainly running into problems because of that. Honestly, they could build a fusion plant right now and be fine. In fact, I would recommend they build a fusion plant right now because that, like, that's what? Like, yeah, a thousand metal? That eh, takes them like a minute and a half, they'll have it. Or not even a minute and a half, actually. It would be like 30 seconds. Like, dump all the energy into that. 30 seconds later, they'll have a metal advantage. And they'll be able to actually spend that metal. But, on the other hand, people don't often build fusion plants, especially not when they're only at plus 30 metal per second. Especially, especially when they are so low on power, it's like... Yeah, I can understand just building the solars. Get that gradual increase, don't rely on the wind. Because, yeah, it's 30 seconds, but you're hoping that the wind stays for that 30 seconds. Anyway, back to the main battle, though. Ultra Godzilla again trying... Well, not even trying so much. They have quite the army coming in here. Paul Bello should be able to defend for now, but once the Ronin Reavers catch up... That's going to be a different story. Paul Bello is being borne down on quite quickly, and I don't... I don't see this being a huge problem yet, but it is something that Paul Bello... Like, they don't have a huge amount of army. They have a few Blitzes, they have a couple of Kadachis and an Ogre. That's about it. They don't really have anything to work with. They have static defenses, so it'll be a little bit harder for Ultra Godzilla to get back there. But that's a lot of Ronin. And most of the static defenses being used are either Stardust, which the Ronin beat outright, or tickets, which don't really pose much of a threat. Like, those won't even one-shot a Ronin. Yeah, two or three Ronin will die. The entire line of pickets will die. This entire northwest side will die if, Paul Bella, or if Ultra Godzilla goes for it. The one thing is that they go for, if Ultra Godzilla goes for it, it's going to be a little harder to get out of there. But not by much, because, of course, there are hills. Because Cloakie can walk up some of these mountainsides. Not many of them. Not most of them, to be perfectly honest. But, yeah, they can at least kind of get up there. Get out of the way. Somewhere that the vehicles cannot get to. That's the important thing right now. As long as the vehicles can't get here, well, Paul Bello is going to have no time, going to have no way of actually defending that northwest side. But Ultra Godzilla, instead choosing to effectively retreat, which this is, to me is advantage, Paul Bello, more for that Stinger at least. Stinger causing most of the problems, but the thing is, Ultra Godzilla is retreating into Paul Bello's forces, which you never really want to do. But that is how things are going right now. Of course, as soon as Paul Bello actually starts to attack, that will be running straight into the Ronin, and that's what they want to have happen. So that, this is still not a great position for Paul Bello. 
But at the same time, Paul Bello now has enough money that they can make tanks work. Like, they can make tanks work quite well. As in, build enough of an army that the map control is no longer an issue. It's no longer seated at the Klingibai factory. And that's exactly what we're seeing right now. Like, already we're coming in here with, basically, a couple ogres being able to deal with most everything coming in here. Top of the Kodashis in the back that will be able to help out with these re with the Ronin once the Ronin get nearby. I mean, like I said, the Ronin are going to be causing problems for the Ogres. Can't really use that, but that's what the Kodachis are for. Burn all the Ronin. Burn them all down. And also distract them. Allowing the Ogres to get in. Of course, that doesn't mean you have to go back and heal up, but that's fine. I mean, hey, if there's one factory that you're going to get people to actually repair their units and not feel like they're doing something wrong, it's the tank factory. Although, in fairness, repairing units is generally a good idea if you have the opportunity to do so. But as far as actually pulling units back to repair them, yeah, Tank Factory is one where you get that a lot, which actually we could kind of recommend for this ogre. Or it could die. I mean, that, that works. That doesn't work, but that's another option. Of course, at this point, Ultra Godzilla just has a massive army advantage. I mean, most of Paul Bell's economy has been spent in defenses, which is fine, I suppose, as far as actually making sure that their base is still alive and they're not going to be too heavily damaged, but it's not really going to be a great option as far as going forward, because Ultra Godzilla has basically gotten a, they've gotten a metal advantage, and they have a quite large attrition advantage as well. Although this Ogre Raid is actually going to be quite helpful for pulling that back. On the other hand, a Thunderbird being a bit of an issue, but remember, Ogres are anti-air as apparently, apparently it was forgotten briefly. Thunderbird will be able to get back and actually attack the Ogre, though. The one more shot will not kill the Thunderbird. Oh, never mind! Doesn't even go for the attack. Is that Thunderbird actually going to go for an attack, or what? Because that Ogre... Pretty sure going to prioritize the Thunderbird when he gets the chance, and it's... Ah, but it's dead. Ah, shoot. Because that would have been actually really nice killing the Thunderbird. If that Ogre had gotten rid of it, the Thunderbird would have... I mean, it wouldn't be a threat, which it currently is. Though, admittedly, the fact that the Thunderbird has been... What the heck is this doing here? Yeah. Admittedly, the fact that the Thunderbird has been revealed is definitely a bit of an issue. Because we should be seeing Razors very shortly. I mean, already seeing Razors. Because, of course, air units. Why wouldn't you? So Razors already being built up. Ogres already being built up as well. And I'm curious if there's going to be any Tridents. Or is it going to... Okay, what, what is being planned here? we got Blast Wings. we got... No Ant here. Blast Wings, Revenants, Nimbus, Trident. Kind of a weird mix. And no Ettons here either. But we have Static AA. Orphelius, who's watching the stream right now, we have Static AA. Don't don't go AA. It's, yeah, we, we got it. I was talking about the Ogre, in which case, yeah. Ogre is AA. Ogre is Flex Anti-Air. Not even a joke. Ogre is actually Flex Anti-Air. It's, it's surprisingly good at that. Of course, whether that's going to be of any use remains to be seen. The Whoa. Really? That, I guess, just hit the unit that was being constructed. Didn't actually do any damage, but still... Good scouting coming in here from Ultra Godzilla. Now they know exactly what's being built up here. And they also know that there's a fusion plant. Which is exactly the target of basically everything following the refuel and rearm. Of course, that leads to the question of whether or not this is actually going to work. Because this force up north here, they are possibly going to run into some problems. I mean, the ogre getting in here on a bunch of soft and ronin. Top of Kodachi softening him up even further. This could be a problem. Oh yeah, and the Revenant finishing it off. Just go for all those splash rockets. Revenant Ro Revenant and Ogre doing the Lord's work. And actually getting a 3,000 medal advantage as far as attrition goes for Paul Bello. So some really efficient defenses from Paul Bello here as they build up the Amphipod factory on top of... Wait, is this for Grizzlies? No! No, surprisingly, it's for Ducks and Archers. Duck, Archer, Boy, Scallop. Just, just for a standard bot ground force, except Amphibots. And two Ogres... So if you're wondering what to do about Cloaky when you're playing tanks, two Ogres is not a bad idea. One Ogre, no. Two Ogres, yes. Unless, of course, your opponent actually decides to spread out their units, in which case, no. But Ultra Godzilla seems to really enjoy point moving a lot of the time, so... That could work against them. And yeah, at this point, Paul Bello, with that attrition advantage on top of the fact that they do have an economic advantage and have managed to make good use of it for most of this game, they are in a very, very secure spot. If Ultra Godzilla built an air pad, I could see this turning around because then, of course, all these area, all these ravens would have plenty of room to work. But for the time being, no. It's actually, this is actually quite good for Paul Bello. Like they can get in here, they can start wrecking face, get the connections in here, burn up the conjurers, burn up the gremlins. I mean, once the gunship go around around the back here, which unfortunately didn't really do much because ravens are a thing. 
They, Ravens can bomb gunships. That's that's just a thing you have to bear in mind. But even then, it's still a lot of damage being done. It's just not a lot of permanent damage. Ultra Godzilla still managed to hold on to a lot of the map, and while the attrition is definitely the advantage of Paul Bello, it's not really about the numbers. It's about the exact position and where that's come in. And Ultra Godzilla only lost a couple of metal extractors. They haven't really lost all that much. Of course, the Stinger goes down, that could be a different story, but even even without the Stinger, it's still one of those situations where Paul Bello, they kind of put all their eggs in one basket. Now they're going to rebuild their army without all that much being poured into the army. Like, split across three factories, 50 metal per second isn't, isn't bad, but it's not necessarily enough to make that work. So, right now... I don't know. Paul Bello has been has had their Anthbot switch revealed. But again, this is just entirely building up a ground army. This is just a lightweight ground army. This is not for Godzilla's. Oh, sorry, for Godzilla's. Ah, for Grizzlies. It's not for Grizzlies, surprisingly enough, which is probably going to throw off Ultra Godzilla because I'm guessing they're going to go for some anti-heavies thinking, oh, well, it's going to be Grizzlies. Of course it's going to be Grizzlies. No, there's going to be ducks and scallops. No one builds scallops. I mean, Ultra Godzilla probably will just get... You know, Ronin. They've been getting Ronin this entire game. It's not like it's a bad option. Scallops are fine. They are kind of unexpected, but they're also something that Ultra Godzilla has already been dealing with, or at least set up to deal with. It's not the worst situation in the world, but still, Paul Bello does have the economic advantage, and Paul Bello is still also has the attrition advantage. Other than gunships, Paul Bello has been doing a really good job keeping their units alive and keeping their units doing more damage than they take. On top of the fact that the defenses are just are kind of impenetrable, or at least they seem impenetrable. Certainly tough to penetrate. We might be seeing some silos pretty soon, just as a way of getting past that. Or artillery, at least. They get some slings. I, I could see if Paul Bella gets some slings or gets some emissaries. That might work. Minotaurs are the option they're going for, and I can kind of see where that would come in. Is the thinking just being powered through the defenses? Stardust? Don't really... I guess Stardust, I do deal with it. Yeah, I don't know. It's hard to power through the defenses, even with Minotaurs, honestly. Oh, yeah, right. Like I said, Ogres are anti-air. Although the Raptors being a nice little distraction, allowing the Ravens to get in, and that will break these Ogres open. But hey, again, efficiency. It was like two Ravens dying to, for killing two Ogres. That's... Oh, okay, it's not quite efficiency. The Ravens do win out on efficiency, but still. Well thought out. I... Yeah, it's like... Paul Bell, they just need to break another army. I think if this army goes down, actually, we'll be fine. The Revenant firing off, not mentioned to get any real damage. Might be able to kill off a Glaive. No, the Revenant missile doesn't even hit that. Those units are super lucky. Like, this group especially. Like the, oh, man, I can't believe how lucky these units are. I mean, they're still being pounded down by a Nimbus, but at the very least, they didn't get destroyed by the Revenant missiles. The Raptors came in and saved them just in time. Oh, well, even then, that might not work. And the Nimbus... I mean, the Nimbus is going to go down. But again, there's still more units coming in everywhere. Could actually should be able to help get rid of this Razor. Not even going for it. Nope. Okay. Well, that's not going to be the way to go. And again, it's just... I don't know. Ultron Zell is actually catching up. I still think Paul Bello just needs to break this army. Like, that's it. But doing that is proving extremely difficult because most of it is made up of gremlins. However, most of it is made up of gremlins. There's quite a few gremlins in this army, and that means there are fewer Glaives, fewer Ronin, fewer Reavers... So, yeah, it's just a matter of piling up units and making them all work. And really, what Paul Bell is doing in the south, that's the right thing to do. Attack where Ultra Godzilla isn't, force them out of there. They force them out of this front line, just peel away. And then, I mean, there's also already a bunch of units together. The only downside being that they are picking fights they can't win. This Minotaur duck fight? No, ducks do not win that fight. <sighs> and you have to see Killer opponent on the chat that a lot of units have been lost to balls. Because Ultra Godzilla point moves. I I mean, I've played them before. They're a pretty good player, actually. They're not the best, but they're pretty good. But why point move? Always the point move. I'm curious what game they came from. I mean, okay, any RTS game, really. Because 0K, spring games are the only ones that have line move. Not just 0K, any spring-based game does have line move. But, yeah, that's not really a thing outside of the spring engine. So, it's like Ultra Godzilla... I mean, they've been playing it for a little while, but, I mean, in terms of overall game experience, they're not too far off from Paul Bello. But I think that it's just a matter of getting used to things like line move compared to point move. Especially when you think, oh, I'll just build a large army and 
A move them and then they'll fight and that sort of works but when they're in a ball like this Revenants kill them, ogres kill them. I mean, there's so many ogres being way more efficient than you'd likely expect. I still think two ogres are a good option when you're dealing with Cloakie as tanks, but they're not that good of an option. Like, they're they're kind of what you have. They're not they're not going to wipe out your opponent's entire army. They're just going to help keep you alive as if you're kiting. Okay. Heron coming in here. It looks like they're not going for Scallop Drop. That's kind of surprising. I would have expected that. I mean, they have the scallops, they have the gunships, they just, like, set a rally point to here, and then set a ferry route to, like, set a ferry route to, oh, I can't set ferry routes because it's not, I'm not playing. But yeah, set a ferry route from there. I realize ferry route is not something that's automatically hotkeyed, but still. It's up here. I'll place a ferry route. Oh, I can, wait, I can do that? That should not happen. I should not, okay, that's. I, hopefully it doesn't actually affect anything. I guess it's just my fairy route as a spectator. Anyway, back to the game. Ultra Godzilla. I think right now, Mutton is winning based on the fact that they did manage to get that attrition back. We got the attrition back, despite the fact that they are losing a lot of units to Splash. Paul Bellows, they've pushed away from Ogres. They've gone to Minotaurs instead of Ogres, but they don't, they can't really do that. The problem is that right now, there's this giant army. Paul Bellows still needs to deal with these giant armies. I mean, they're shrinking because they're constantly clumped up and getting killed by, by small explosions, but still, there's these giant armies coming in here that have not been dealt with. And Ultra Godzilla, yes, they haven't rebuilt those giant armies. They themselves have been focusing largely on tanks, so, and a Goliath would be in order. But still, if it weren't for the fact that the units are getting carelessly too close to a bunch of splash damage, Paul Bello probably would have lost right now. Like, it's a bit better micro. It could have, like, Force could have gone over here and then up here, killed off all these caretakers, maybe broken through the back here. If they got lucky, they could have wiped out the fusion plant. That would have destroyed a lot without getting into the Stardust or anything else. And right now, Ultra Godzilla should know most of this is there because, I mean, they've explored it with their Ravens. They, they've gone in the back of this base. They know stuff's here. So it's a bit of a shame there that we are seeing that the units aren't really being used. We're getting rid of the fusion plant or whatever else. Like, Paul Bello has been able to j basically take this game back just because they had good splash damage and because, well... Explosion damage. They had a chainsaw that exploded and killed off a bunch of glaives. That's why Paul Bello is back in this game. If they ever really arguably out of this game. The main issue for me right now is that Paul Bello's army is not very big. But Ultra Godzilla has not been building up an army of their own. They've been building up a bunch of Minotaurs, sure, but I mean, that's exactly what Paul Bello has been building up to deal with. But a large army of glaives and, and reavers? No, that was not prepared for. Well, that's gonna be... Yeah. Well, at any rate, I mean, Ultra Godzilla... Let's just speed this up a bit, because Ultra Godzilla... Like, at this point, they're basically just gonna be losing a bunch of units to Paul Bella. Like, Paul Bella has a reasonably... reasonably well-equipped force to actually deal with these Goliaths, or these Minotaurs. Especially for cost. Although Paul does lose the commander, so it's a bit of a blow on their part, but they think they are No, they didn't have any storage. Ultra Godzilla got the storage. Paul Bello has not. But even then, like I said, Paul Bello's defenses are just too much for dealing with the standard conventional units, or at least the way that that, are, that is being done. It is not too much for standard for the non-special like special units, stuff like the missile silo or whatever. That would be handy, but you don't really need that. Again, emissaries would do the job. Like, emissaries is a bit of frontline support with, I mean, given the fact that there's a lot of kind of midway units... Ogres wouldn't be a bad idea. Minotaurs are also not a terrible idea, but as we're seeing right now, Paul Bello just doesn't care. They're going to the Minotaurs, and they're just getting rid of everything they can. It's like, they really don't care. Just get in here, wipe everything out, and again, anything tries to attack the base, the Scallops just deal with it. Scallops and boys, together, doing a fine job defending. And Paul Bello doing exactly what I was kind of hoping Ultra Godzilla would do, start wiping out some of the caretakers, and just generally reduce the amount of army production that can be done. I mean, Paul Bello right now, I'm not really sure what they're focusing on other than just getting a bunch of gunships. So they, they realize that a lot of the gremlins died. So they can start throwing revenants at around, hope for the best. Actually, not even hope for the best. This actually will work quite well. Like, for getting rid of these minotaurs, the revenants are actually a really good choice, considering there wasn't much anti here. There is now, but still, that's fine. The revenants, were, the revenants soften up their minotaurs perfectly well. 
And I mean, yes, the Raptor is a problem, but... I mean, Revenant, these Revenants are still doing a fine job. Got rid of the Commander. Well, Ultra Godzilla was already prepared for that. They already had the storage. But still, got rid of the Commander. Got rid of a lot of the Minotaurs. But at this point, I still feel like Paul Bello really needs to be a little more careful. Like, retreating the Revenants would have been the better choice at that point once the Raptors came in. But still, it's just a question of can you get rid of Ultra Godzilla's Minotaurs? And the answer right now is like, kind of, but at great cost. I mean, just really one Goliath would do the trick. Or sorry, not Goliath, Cyclops. One Cyclops would do the trick. Maybe two. There are six Revenants, so... Or sorry, six Minotaurs, so yeah, maybe do that. Yeah, one Cyclops, two Cyclops against six Minotaurs. With other, with other units supporting it. Yeah, that'd, probably, that'd be a win. And the thing is, Paul Bell is in a good spot for dealing with that, and also for getting around and doing some backyard harassment. Just kind of wish they'd stop throwing air units into the anti-air, hoping to tank it out. Like, in this case, I kind of get it, because the Ogre's there to help out. But even then, that Nimbus... That took a lot more damage than it really had any right to. But, at this point, still a matter of Ultra Godzilla trying to just... set up their army, and they really do have that army. I mean, Paul Bello, they've now finally... Okay, now they've finally got some reclaim going. Now they've finally got enough of an economy that... I mean, you'd think they'd have enough of an economy already. But again, it's just... Ultra Godzilla has been more efficient, and... Ultra Godzilla has also been really investing into a lot of heavy units, which means the attrition stats don't totally reflect what's going on in terms of damage. But Paul Bello, I don't know. Like, Ultra Godzilla's gone. I think, really, I like the way Ultra Godzilla has taken this game. They went from a bunch of lightweight units, and then a little bit later than probably most people would necessarily like, but still, eventually, hit, shifting off to heavyweight units and their opponents are still kind of trying to deal with, raid for with, well, anti-light, anti-mass units. But yeah. Oh, Sprang pointing out that air units are kind of needed to tank the Razor. That's fair. I guess I can kind of see that. I just kind of wish the Ogre was closer before that started happening, so the Nimbus took less damage in the process. But yeah, my point here is, though, it, like, all these Nimbuses are, they're damaging all the, all the Minotaurs. Sure, it's helping, but the Minotaurs survived. I think one of them died for three Nimbuses, and Minotaurs are about the same cost. So, yeah, that was definitely more efficient. That's kind of my point here, is Ultra Godzilla has units that are not what Paul Bello is trying to deal with, and Paul Bello has not built up their counters. I mean, like I said, Scallop Boy has worked really well to deal with them. That's been kind of a counter. It just hasn't been enough of a counter. It's not an efficient counter. Not ultimately, though. But, I mean, hey, as a raiding force and just a way of screening around to make sure they know exactly where Ultra Godzilla is, it's not a bad thing for Paul Bello to have. It's just they don't really have any ace up their sleeve, because, I mean, there's anti-air on the field, though. Actually, there's not. There's there's one Razor. Like, that's it, actually. That that really is it. There's one Razor belonging to Ultra Godzilla. Paul Bello, other than the fact that there's Gremlins and a few Raptors, which, really, there aren't many of those left, honestly. In fact, the Air Factory's been reclaimed. Wait, what? Did I miss the Air Factory being destroyed? Because I saw that Goliath get, or that Minotaur get in here, and it didn't do that much damage. Well, at any rate, air is not really being invested in for some reason by Ultra Godzilla. Like, this is... This is a strange way to play. Because, I mean, even if the air factory was destroyed, you'd normally expect that someone would actually rebuild the air factory, but I suppose they just figured they'd reclaim it for, for, for parts, because, hey, there's half a dozen razors in Paul Bellow's field, so... Not really that useful. Minotaurs are definitely doing more. But again, this is just coming down to the fact that Paul Bello has had a massive economic advantage this whole game. Well, an economic advantage this whole game, and a massive one for the last 10 minutes. The fact that Ultra Godzilla is doing as well as they are speaks more to the fact that their unit choice has been quite on point, rather than the fact that they've actually had the economy to build it up. Especially considering that a lot of their resources have been available, it's been in their territory, and they haven't taken it. Not to mention the idle workers here, I mean, that's, that's a lot of reclaim. 2,000 metal reclaim in an area that's been under their control somewhat tenuously, but still roughly under their control. That's a lot of money that's not been taken. That's a lot of money on the table, and Ultra Godzilla now is taking it. Paul Bello remains with an economic advantage, at least 2-1 metal advantage, just, just on its own. But I mean, if Ultra Godzilla can hold the line just a little bit longer, you know, get half a dozen workers on that, 
Which they sh I think they have? No, they don't have a whole lot of conjurers. Okay. Well, I need to build a bunch of conjurers. I think if the conjurer is working, I should reclaim. And if what these forces in the front, these forces in the front are at least stopping Ultra Godzilla, or stopping Paul Bella from getting back and, and getting Godzilla's Godzilla's conjurers. That was a conjurer for a second. No, it's a gremlin. Getting Godzilla's conjurers and stopping the reclaim from happening. So if that works, I mean, yeah, that's that's more money for Ultra Godzilla, and they have been quite efficient. But I think at this point, Paul Bello might still be taking it out. I think it might just be too much. I mean, it's Revenant coming in as well. Remember, not a whole lot of anti air on Ultra Godzilla's side. And hey, Paul Bello's retreating! De dealing with some damage, pulling back, making Ultra Godzilla scared to expand again. All good. I mean, again, Ultra Godzilla has managed to reclaim quite a bit of stuff in the south. But not really enough, and Paul Bello getting rid of that too. So overall, very efficient approach by Paul Bello. Ultra Godzilla likely to just... Yeah, they're going to lose that on... No, Ultra Godzilla has nothing. This this should be it. These Minotaurs are the last line of defense that Ultra Godzilla has. And the Revenants have no real threat. No anti are being built up. Again, no Raptors being built up. Some Gremlins being built up, but there's not really enough of them to stop a Revenant. Not efficiently. I mean, as soon as the Revenant... As soon as the Gremlin shows itself, the Revenant will wipe it to pieces. However, the one bit of anti are coming in here is going to get rid of the Revenant. So, unfortunately for that Revenant, it was not quite the way to go. I mean, it was close, but it just wasn't. Like, ah. Another Revenant coming in here, though, but no ground force to follow up. And again, there's a lot of reclaim here this character can actually pick up on. So Ultra Godzilla's economy is going to get increasingly strong as this Revenant comes in. But hey, Caretaker. It will survive long enough to kill, that care kill the Caretakers. Gets three of them. Does not get all four, but still, that's, that's, an, uh, that's not quite enough, though. Ultra Godzilla could not really spend all that money. Like, it's not a terrible idea. It doesn't mean the reclaim won't be as effective. But yeah, that's enough. Ultra Godzilla decides, you know what? I can't go in. And honestly, they held on really long. I mean, metal used just a massive gap. Paul Bella had 25,000 metal over Ultra Godzilla by the end of the game. Army value. Ultra Godzilla just... Wow, they actually had a threefold advantage at one point. Sheesh. Yeah, Ultra Godzilla did a great job as far as efficiency was concerned. Or at least of getting their army in place, but again, it kind of flipped. The early game, Paul Bello could not take map control. I mean, they did, mostly from defenses, but they couldn't really take map control. Ultra Godzilla had all the space they could take, and they didn't grab it. And I think if Ultra Godzilla had grabbed that early income, like right at the start of the game, and had their glazes around the map, and they were making Paul Bello kind of scared to do much, Ultra Godzilla could have taken so many metal extractors. And yeah, they might have lost some later on, but if they'd taken the metal extractors and put up some stardusts and maybe some stingers and just had that defenses up there so that it would be way harder for Ultra Godzilla to deal with them, then... Oh, sorry, for Paul Bella to deal with them, then Ultra Godzilla would have had a massive lead getting into the mid-game, at which point that army lead would have been backed up by a massive production lead, assuming that, again, Paul Bella didn't excess... Sorry, Ultra Godzilla didn't excess, but even then that was like... 2,000 or 15, 1,600 metal out of a 25,000 metal used deficit. Like, metal produced, metal used, it's it's close enough, it makes a little difference. Paul Bello just got more metal. They got overdrive at the start, they got reclaim, actually, they didn't much reclaim. Ultra Godzilla won on the reclaim, but the overdrive came in for Paul Bello right at the start, and Ultra Godzilla was struggling on energy the entire time. And yeah, fine step, very succinctly pointing out, this game would have been Ultra Godzilla's 10 minutes ago had they decided not to fight Ogres head-on with Glaives. Because, no, Ogres beat Glaives, especially in numbers. Like, the thing with the thing with Glaives is that they are actually not bad at anti-riot. Like, you get half a dozen of them, you take out a Reaver. And against, Le against Rippers and Ogres, they're surprisingly effective if you spread them out. Because both those units, I mean, they have this high alpha but low fire rate projectile so that if the glaives aren't close to each other then they can only like one maybe two die and they get rid of the unit but once you have two or three like either ogres or rippers the glaives die they're all dead it's just too much like the fire rate disadvantage is essentially dealt with by numbers and then the glaives get wiped out
Anyway, gonna have another game. This, by the way, was a request, I believe, from Ultra Godzilla. The next one's gonna be a request from FFC. Between Dying Throne and FFC, though I believe Dying Throne right now is streaming their own games. But FFC is watching. So yeah. Of that match will be up in a couple minutes, so stay tuned for that. And then after that, I'm gonna be doing. I think I'll just do these two replays, and then I'll we'll see how it goes. I might do another one because I want to do the Ludum Dare game that Guy Alp and crew made. Actually, a lot of the devs for Spring and Zero K made. So I want to check that out on stream too after the replays. So probably I'll do one more after this. I don't have any requests right now. But yeah. Or FFC, did you not request this? I thought I thought you did. Maybe it was Dying Funny that requested it. I I was sure it was you. Yeah, well, anyway. I, well, we'll have that next, so stay tuned. Oh, okay, FFC did. Good. All right, just to get that on the record.